If you are really new to PHP or you're just very new to working with frameworks or any kind of dependencies that you might pull into your project, uh, we're going to take this part to take a look at a piece of software called Composer, uh, what it is, what we use it for, and we're going to walk through downloading it together and getting Slim 3 installed. Now, if you've already worked with Slim 3 before, feel free to just go ahead and uh, download it with Composer and move on to the next part. Uh, but we're going to take a look now at downloading this and getting Slim installed. So first of all, what is Composer? Well, typically when you want to pull in dependencies uh, into any project, you may go ahead and create some kind of folder. You might copy across some code to uh, do something. And this is fine in some respects, but most of the time what you want is to be able to automatically pull down everything that your project requires. And we refer to these as dependencies. So Composer is very simply a dependency manager for PHP that allows us to, on the command line, tell Composer what we want to pull down. It will install it all for us and we'll have it available and ready to use. So uh, the first thing then is getting this downloaded. Now you're going to need a command prompt open and I just happen to be in that directory that we're currently in uh, over in my text editor just here. So let's go and take a look at the download section here. There are a couple of ways to use this but generally what you want to do is go ahead and just copy all of this in and you'll be good to go. Now you first of all need to make sure that you have PHP installed and you can do that using PHP-V and that will give you the version number that you're working with as well. Now in this case I'm working with PHP 7. Don't worry if you have a lower version than this. We're going to be covering everything for PHP 5.6 and above. So let's go and just copy this over again making sure that we are within the directory that our project sits and uh, we'll wait for this to all finish. Okay, so what has happened now is if we just head over to our text editor, this has downloaded a composer.phar file, which is a PHP executable file. So we can run this on the command line using PHP. So let's go ahead and run PHP, and then we immediately run composer.phar. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a list of all of the different options that we have with Composer. Now Composer isn't just for downloading dependencies. We can also do things like auto loading our files, but we are gonna be taking a look at that a little bit later on. So the main commands that you're gonna use with Composer are Composer require. So anything that you want to run comes after this. So for example, Composer require, and then the name of the dependency that you want to pull down. Now what this will do is it will uh, create a composer.json file. So it will create a JSON file within your root directory. And as you move your project around, your anyone that uses your code or anyone that contributes to your code or you in the future will know exactly the dependencies that need to be installed. And therefore, when we run at composer, so in this case, php composer.phar and then install, that will install all of our dependencies for us and Slim is included in that dependency list. So uh, let's go ahead and look at how this works. Let's uh, just hop over to the Slim documentation or over on the Slim GitHub page. And you'll notice that anything that you kind of want to pull in with your project will have uh, this kind of command here. Now at the moment we've downloaded the Composer executable file, but sometimes you may wish to install this globally. This varies from operating system to operating system, but in my case you can see I can just run Composer and then the name of the command that I want. There's nothing wrong with having the uh, executable file just sitting in here, absolutely fine. So let's go ahead and download Slim. Let's get this downloaded, we'll see what happens after we do this. So let's take the project name. This is the version which is optional. We don't need to supply this. If we don't supply the version, uh, it will just pull down the latest release for us. So in my case, what I would do is when I start up a fresh slim project, I would go and I would run either PHP composer.phar. So you may have that file in there, or I would run composer and then the name of the command. It will just work in exactly the same way. So in my case, let's go ahead and run with PHP composer phar just in case you are using this and what we're going to do is require into our project slim slash slim now the reason it's in this kind of format is this is the vendor name so slim is the vendor name or the company name or the person's name 
and then slim is the name of the project so we'll see more examples of this throughout the course but for now just know that we have a vendor or a company name and then the actual package name so let's go ahead and run this and you'll notice that this will do a few things it will download slim for us and uh, we'll check out our text editor to see what's happened Okay, so uh, a couple of things have happened here. We have obviously installed Slim and we're using version 3.6.0. And what we've also done is had a few more dependencies downloaded. Now these are dependencies defined by Slim. So when we choose to download Slim, this will also go and it will download anything that Slim requires as well. And as you can see, it's a very lightweight framework. It doesn't really require that many dependencies. For larger frameworks, you'll find that you have a lot more dependencies that are downloaded. So in this case, we have things like Pimple, HTTP Message, a router, and we have a container uh, in here as well. So we'll be talking about these throughout the series, uh, but for now, that's just exactly what's happened here. And these will either download or they will load from the cache. Now, I already had these on my system, so they would have just been pulled in and not downloaded. Okay, so now over to our text editor, you'll notice that a few things have been created here. So let's go through these and talk about what they are. Now, I said earlier that we have a composer.json file. And you can see this is literally just a JSON structure, and this defines what we require into our project. So let's say that at some point we wanted really good date time support. Well, what we could do is manually inside of here, go ahead and define that we wanted to pull in the carbon library, which is a really good library for working with carbon. We'd go ahead and define that in there, and then we'd go ahead and give the version number that we wanted to pull in. Now this will always, every time you run a composer install, install the version that you've specified and if you want to update this you can simply update it and then go ahead and run compose it install again now we're not going to do that now we'll get to uh, installing other dependencies later but that's exactly what is happening this is a kind of blueprint as to what your application requires uh, when you go ahead and install it so let's take a look at composer.lock. Basically, the purpose of this file is to uh, keep track of what you have uh, downloaded and it just keeps everything up to date, especially when you push this up to production. We're not going to worry too much about this for now. It's not really that interesting, uh, but uh, just know it's there. And if you do push this up to a project, say on a production server, you'll need to upload this file as well. Now, the vendor folder here has downloaded and categorized all of the different dependencies within their own folder. So like I said earlier, when you pull in uh, some kind of dependency from uh, anywhere you find it, you're more than likely gonna create a folder for it. You're gonna copy them files over and then start using them. Now in this case, that's all been done for us. And because we have our composer.json file, it knows what we should be requiring into our project and we can keep things up to date very easily. We don't have to manually copy files around. We don't need to do any of that stuff. It's all handled for us. And that is why a dependency manager is so helpful. So what happens then when, for example, we get rid of the vendor folder? Well, of course, now we have no dependencies whatsoever in our project. Well, what we can actually do in this case is go ahead and run compose it install again. So let's say that we copy this over to a friend or we go ahead and push this up to uh, some kind of server. You don't want to include the vendor folder because that contains lots of files that you probably don't wanna be moving around and shifting around places. So when you have a fresh project here, you wouldn't send this around with a vendor folder. Instead, what you would do is you would go ahead and run php composer.phr install and that would then go ahead and re-download all of them dependencies. So no matter how many times we get rid of this, it's never going away as long as we go ahead and reinstall our dependencies. So again, uh, this is pretty much it to be honest. Just for now, this is all we really need to get started with Slim. We've downloaded it with Composer. It's created a vendor folder with the Slim source code inside of here ready to use and as well as all of the other dependencies as well. Now, really interestingly, you might be thinking, well, isn't it annoying to have to use all of these dependencies? Let's say we chose to download that carbon library and wanted to work with dates and times with it. How are we going to use this? Well, we have an auto loader just here. Now this doesn't look like much, but what it's actually going to do is load in all of your dependencies so they can be used. So when you go ahead and maybe manually pull down different dependencies, you may have to require them in at the top of a PHP file. In our case, the only file that we need to require in 
is vendor slash autoload.php. That's all we need to do. So now that we've done that, why don't we just go and require this in just to make sure that we didn't break anything. We're going to come over to say the root directory here and we would just start this out by creating maybe a normal index.php file. So like I was saying, if you had lots of different dependencies uh, that you wanted to inc include in, maybe you had created a libraries folder and you wanted to pull in carbon.php and you had a load of other dependencies you wanted to pull in as well. You can obviously see that this is going to get really messy. So in our case, like we've already explained, we just have this single file which will pull in all of our dependencies, whether we download them now or into the future. And all we need to do in here is require in vendor slash autoload.php and that is everything that we could possibly need required in. And later on, we'll get to things like auto loading our own files so they can also be included with this require as well. So if we check this out in the browser, you can see that it looks good. Of course, if we don't have our vendor folder, so let's say we were uh, sending this project over to a friend, what they would have to then do, because obviously now this file doesn't exist, is using Composer themselves, go ahead and run Composer install or php composer.phir install and that would go ahead and download everything and then they could run your project without having all of them files shipped around and of course when they do do that they will get exactly the same version as well so you know that things are less likely to break so that is an introduction to composer hopefully that makes sense we will be using it to install a few more dependencies throughout this course but that should give you a good idea as to how easy it is to go ahead and pull things down and uh, like i said we'll get a lot of practice with this throughout the course but let's jump over to the next part and look at uh, getting started with slim and creating a simple route that we can view in our browser